good morning beautiful human thanks for clicking on this video welcome back or welcome to the struggle my name is rose and you watch my struggle fitness journey today is a friday it's a friday turn up today i believe it's um performance day at the gym i still haven't quite figured out what that means yet but i think it's a good mix of cardio and strength so we're about to go knock that out i am thankful today that this morning it is not no 50 freaking degrees it is a nice 70 degrees, just like I like it. And so let's go and get this work. All out straight, come on. That's it? That's all you got? That's all you got? Today wasn't my best eating day, but I did meet my macros. Started off with a snack of chicken tenders left over from yesterday. And then my first actual meal was this salmon, potato, and slaw mix. I cooked a wild salmon in the air fryer along with some Japanese sweet potatoes, which, by the way, I absolutely love. I actually didn't even finish the whole plate of slaw, but the rest was pretty good. Then I ended up having some popcorn. I sprayed it with some cooking spray and some salt and good to go. To keep that protein goal, I ended up making two chicken sausages. I popped it in the air fryer with some sugar-free barbecue sauce and mustard. Then I chugged this coconut here. I got this super cool tool from Amazon that allows me to open it and just stick a straw in it. I was short on protein and carbs, of course, so I made like a crusted chicken thigh and that's pretty much how i ended my day i was way too full for veggies hey guys i am here i'm ready to wrap up the day disclaimer my voice sounds a little deeper than usual because it's about midnight and i'm tired but i had a really good day and i will sit here and tell you why i'm sleeping this late but it's not worth the extra time so um let's talk about the book we're reading think like a monk and today i told you that i was going to talk about purpose with you so let's talk about purpose before i get too far into the book though let me just say today i went to the gym with the intention of not going ham okay it's very hard to go ham every day also i thought it was hard to go ham every day until i got partnered with jay who's the trainer and then you realize okay i guess i can go ham every day but y'all i'm beat excuse me i'm tired this girl is tired. I went in this morning hoping to partner with D. And yes, I was gonna work. I was gonna give like 90%, but uh I got I got set up. I got set up. I got set up. I was set up with Jay. She would not let me quit. And I was working harder than I ever thought I was gonna work today. So that's what happened with that. And I didn't get my reading in this morning because I had a doctor's appointment. So that's that's not a good reason. I did read this morning, but the book I read this morning was this little book here. <laughs> it's a tiny little book. It's called E Squared. It's um, nine to do it yourself energy experiments and it fits in the palm of your hands. And I don't want to carry a big bag, so I just put this in my pocket. <laughs> and that's what I read this morning. Y'all, let me tell y'all without doing too much. This was like maybe five or six bucks on Amazon. Go get you one, go get a copy. I'm not sharing this here or anywhere because it's literally just a little experiment but i highly recommend you you check it out i redid the first experiment and today kind of exploded into this whole intentions manifestations and oh today was such a good day the universe was good to me today and i feel like it has a lot to do with um the reading that I, i've been doing this week and just my intentions and my purpose for this year. So get you this little book. That's what I read this morning. And it kind of ties into these two together because the very first chapter in this is um, manifesting what you want, right? And that's exactly what this is. And that, did we talk? I, yeah, we talked about it in this book as well. And tonight I actually went out for the first time since like, I don't know how long. I don't even think you would consider going out because I literally went to the gym. But um, at the gym, they had this um, vision board planning 
event and I've been eyeing it all week and I don't know, I didn't want to sign up. But this morning, last minute, I was like, eh, why not? Might as well. And look, when I tell you, I'm so glad we went. Well, I should say, I'm so glad I went. I'm so glad I went. So we had some materials to create, of course, a vision board. Mine is not finished. I have to glue it together. I'm very slow when it comes to creating vision boards because I get too caught up in the cutting and things like that. And I want it to be perfect. So anyway, so we had that. And then, so the main idea was we, we set our goals, set our intentions and um, manifested that. And then anything that we felt were, going to be things, obstacles keeping us from achieving those goals. We bought, we wrote them out, wrote out the obstacles in a little like post-it note, bought it up, put it in a little pot and set it on fire. And the point of that is to let it go, right? So letting go of the obstacles that will keep us from those goals. So I'm really looking forward to this year. I'm so excited to see the things on my board come to pass and one thing that's going to come, the one thing that's going to be required with it, and I think I mentioned this the last time we talked, was, yes, you tell the universe what you want, but you also have to work at it, right? So in doing our vision boards, the leader, she she asked us, she said, hey, okay, also consider what is it going to take to get there? Nothing comes without work. Everything in life requires some form of work. So one of my thing on my vision board, of course, is to lose 20 pounds. That's going to come with some work. Another thing is to put my home together. <laughs> That's going to take some work. I've been living here for five or six years. And when I tell you the only room that has anything on the wall is this room. And the only reason it has anything on the wall is because I do the YouTube videos here. But I need to add some personality to my room. And that may not be something that's... um. Like, why would that be in your vision board? But for me, it's important. Therefore, it's on my vision board. All right, um, let me not get too far at that. So yeah, it was a really nice event. I'm so glad I went. And I feel like it kind of tied it into everything. We did a little meditation. And I know we talked about breathing. What was that yesterday we talked about breathing? Yes, yesterday, I think. And so pretty much, it, it legit, I kid you not, it legit felt like I attended the chapters in this book live and i'm so thankful and so grateful that i went i'm going to put the the link to the company that hosted the event and you guys can check them out because i feel like it's a super cool thing and i i don't know if they do things outside of florida or small groups but it was definitely a great experience 10 out of 10 would highly recommend okay now into the reading for today. I think yesterday I told you guys that we were going to talk about purpose today. Y'all, I took so many notes. I took a whole full page. So this page and that page, but I'm not going to go through every single thing. Um, I'll leave some things for you to read, but um, I'll define what Dharma is, and then I'll give you guys a few direct quotes, and then we'll talk about potential. So Dharma is basically using what you have or what you're good at to serve others. Whatever that is, you kind of have to figure out. It's going to be a combination of your passion, your expertise, and the usefulness of those two things. So the potential thing, um, I'll give you like four different types of potential or different quadrants i think it is yeah four quadrants of potential and then you can figure out where you fit in so here's some quotes that um i want to leave you with one of them is you can't be anything you want you cannot be anything you want but you can be everything that you are um the whole idea is we're born with strengths things that we're naturally good at or things that we learn as skills and become good at. And those are the things that you can count on, you know, using and sharing with the world. Now, it doesn't make sense for you to say like, okay, I'm gonna be the best tennis player out there if um, you've never played a day of tennis in your life or as he says in the book, it's not your dharma, okay? You can be good at it, Heck, you can probably play it, but if, if it's not your thing, if it's not what you're passionate about, if it's not your area of expertise and it's not useful to you, it's not going to be worth it. 
okay? And then the next thing is your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. It is so easy in today's society to look at a YouTuber, to look at a, I guess, an influencer, which is we're living in the social media age. It's very easy to look at someone on social media and think, oh my gosh, I want that life or I'm going to live like them. But remember, like I told you guys recently, what was the quote? Um, when you see a life that you want, you have to ask yourself, am I willing to go through the struggles or obstacles that they face? And am I willing to do the work? If the answer to those two or no, then it's not worth it. But at the same time, why spend time trying to be someone else when you could get to know yourself and be yourself? Why would you do that? And I feel like this is something that's very common in the um, I'm going to speak for the Haitian, well, not for all Haitians, for the, for my Haitian household that I grew up in. And in general, like my Haitian friends around me, it's very common in the Haitian home for the parents to say, okay, I'm sending you to school to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, to be something that makes a lot of money, to be a nurse. Um, because for for most Haitian parents, it's like, okay, I want you to be better than me. I want you to do better than me. I need you to make money. And this is what I want you to do. And a lot of Haitian um, kids that fall into that where they'll go to school. They'll do as their parent requested. They'll go to school and start to be a lawyer, so they to be a doctor, but have zero passion for it. They don't want to do it. They're just doing it to make their parents happy. And I was the one person... Um, not the one person, but I'm, I am one of the people that said, you know what? Yeah, it's not for me, dog. You know, in school, I wanted to do what my mom wanted me to do. I wanted to be a doctor. In fact, I wanted to be a pediatrician. So I thought for like, anytime someone asked me what you want to be, pediatric, pediatrician, 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 right? Um, in high school, I had the opportunity to do a, um, what do they call internship? <laughs> I had an opportunity to do an internship at like the pediatrics unit at um, the hospital. And when I say I went home every day crying, I was just way too emotional to be in that field to see kids in pain. I hate shots. I hate being in the hospital. So clearly, yes, the money sounded good. Yes, it would have made my mom super happy to have a doctor in the family, but it wasn't for me. And I'm so glad I learned at an earlier age that that just wasn't what I wanted to do. So when I told my mom I wanted to be an educator, yeah, you best believe she was disappointed. <laughs> she was like, she was like, teacher, what? And it was something that had to be done because I, at the end of the day, my happiness was more important because I had to live with myself. So don't waste time trying to be something that you're not. Instead, strengthen what you are. Um, Jay mentions that it's very, very common in this society for our weaknesses to be highlighted and our strength or not. So work on strengthening the things that you're strong at. The example that he gave is, and I, I can attest to that, you can have four A's on your report card, that one B or a C, that's the one your mom's gonna look at like what happened here and for me it was like what about all these a's that i have like are those not important yeah i'm going back i'm going back let me come back to the present but yeah focus on your strength and use those strengths to get to where you want to be in life i really enjoy that particular chapter um he shares four different quarters of potential and and uh, the, the last one I'm going to give you is where you want to be. One quadrant is you're good at it, but you don't love it. And I feel like um, that's currently where I'm at right now when it comes to my work. I'm good at it, but I don't love it. So the suggestion for that is because, especially nowadays during this pandemic, it's not very easy to just say, okay, do this, I'm gonna hop around until I find something I like or this just is not the job for me. So one suggestion is whatever you do love, bring it to where you are currently. For me, what I love about education is being able to teach, right? That for me is, is ed ed education. I love interacting with my students. I love seeing them face to face. So in an online environment, which I thought would have been for me, I guess I had a different perspective going in there than what I currently have. But 
I, I don't have that right now. So one option would be, okay, leave it, go back to school right away. Or I could look within the organization that I'm currently in and see if I could have that same face-to-face -face interaction or even, even if it's virtual, but at least I'll have live virtual, if that makes sense at all. So bring the, the strengths that you have to where you are currently and make it work because I mean, like I say, you can't just hop and switch jobs. So find a way to make it work. Um, the second quadrant or another quadrant in no particular order is you're not good at it, but you love it. <laughs> There's a lot of people who love what they do, but they struggle every day and that's completely okay. Or you love it, but you just have no clue where to begin. In this day and age, there's no excuse for you to not learn something that you want to. Everything is virtual. There's so many resources, so many websites, YouTube included, where you can go and learn a skill. You can learn something. And also too, you can rely on the strength of others. I wanted to learn to ride a bike. That wasn't my strength. That's not what I knew how to do. So I relied on the people who knew how to ride a bike and they taught me how to ride a bike. It's a silly example, but you get the point. If you want to learn to cook, um, if you love cooking, but you burn every meal or everything comes out bland, then hop onto YouTube, go to a cooking channel and learn something from there. Get a cookbook, follow the recipe to a T. There's many things you can do, especially when you love something, but you're not good at it. And then eventually you'll get to where we're going to, um, which is the last one. The next one is you're not good at it and you don't love it. Guess what? That's exactly where you don't want to be. You never want to be in a place where you're not good at it and you don't love it. Those two together cannot work. At least in the first one where you're good at it, you don't love it, you can bring things, you can make yourself like it, you can, you know, rework it to fall in love with it. And then if you're not good at it and you love it, you can learn the skill. But this one here, there's two things you have to do and you're gonna be miserable for a while. So first of all, run as far as possible, stay away from it if possible, and then, outsource it i hate cleaning oh my gosh i hate cleaning so much and i don't think i'm good at it because i feel like no matter how much i clean things just get dirty right back unless that's just the nature of clean but i absolutely hate it with a passion so outsource it it's a lot cheaper for you to pay whatever price it is than to stress over it so that's one thing and he says hurt the pocket and save the mind and i'm, I'm gonna take that to heart i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna take that to to heart y'all jay says every task is essential none is less important than the others and none of us is too important to do any chore let me say that again None of us is too important to do any chore. So uh, in, in our society, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the lawyers, the doctors, and they're up top. Teachers, not so much. Custodials, not so much. The cashier at the store, not so much. And you can list on and on, even within your environment or within your community. Look around you, what jobs are more valued than others? And think about it, like without... Without teachers, they want to be doctors or lawyers, right? Because somebody has to teach them. So my job is essential in that sense. And it, at a school, without the custodian, I wouldn't walk into a classroom that was conducive to a positive learning environment because I'd be sneezing all over the place because dust is not my friend, right? Or the floors would be dirty. The, the trash would still be full because there's no one to empty it or, you know, the 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 floor would be sticky or dirty because there's no one to mop it so every job is essential just because you don't like it just because it's not for you don't mean somebody else um can't somebody else won't do it and something that was so so important is it's like thinking you are too good for a particular job just devalues anyone who does that particular chore or that particular job so the next time you think like i'm not gonna do that Check yourself before you wreck yourself, okay? <laughs> I'll, I'll say it there. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. And then, of course, the fourth quadrant is you, you're you good at it and you love it. Man, that's the sweet spot. If you can get to a place where you're good at it and you love it, 
you're set. You found your dharma. That's exactly what dharma is. You're using what you're good at and talented at to help others. So hopefully you find what you're good at and you find your dharma and you make it work for you. Until then, keep searching for it. Keep manifesting it. Keep learning to get there. And um, that's it for tonight. I try to make this so short, but what a fail. Until I see you in the next one, y'all, set your intentions, manifest positive vibes, put it out there into the universe, pay attention, and I guarantee you'll get some kind of answers. Um, yeah, that's it. Until I see the next one, make really good choices, better choices than me. Am I going to sleep right now? No. Am I waking up to, to work out tomorrow? Yes. Not at 5 a.m. though. So I'm going to find a way to be productive because I still have like three cups of water to drink today. And so I'm going to drink that, make sure I empty my bladder a bit before I get to bed. So that's what I'm doing. Goodbye.